Well, you got you have bearded Steve. Pray for my sweet babu. You have bearded Steve. Yeah. Well, all right. By the time most people on YouTube see this, it's going to be out anyway. But it's not a spoiler to say that Chris Evans is leaving. I know because he's quite publicly said, "My contract's up. I'm out. I'm out. I'm going to do other stuff like directing YouTube." And he's starting like his own political website. Yeah. I, okay, Chris. You. 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 you okay. You do that. He means well, and I respect that. <laughs> He means well. He does. Um, but yeah, it's it's not so much that Captain America is leaving. It's just a question of how at this point. That's the only thing yeah. we don't know. Like, is he going to... I feel like they kind of have to kill him. Because I don't think Steve Rogers would retire. We'll have to and see. Just be like, I'm a peace out, guys. You take care of the universe. I've read a bunch of the spoilers, so I I know what supposedly happens. I'm not going to I'm not going to spoil you. You know me. I love spoilers, and I'm trying so hard not to. Do you, you? I could tell you. I could type it to you, but you know. I'm trying so hard. Like I, I'm really working on my restraint. It's. I have thoughts. I, I'm sure everyone will have thoughts once the movie is out, but. I have two responses to it. It's like, if this was the end of the Marvel Comics universe on screen, Marvel Cinematics universe, if this was the end of it, awesome. They, perfect ending. However, they have many more movies planned. They've got Black Panther 2, they have Doctor Strange 2, they have Eternals, they have Shang-Chi, all still in the same cinematic universe. Yeah. The Russos are leaving. I, I'm no spoilers, but the Russos are leaving a great big fucking mess. I think it's gonna be fine. Marvel Studios really, really, really likes money. <laughs> That's true. And so I think that they probably have a plan because <laughs> they like money. It might be they have a plan, but it's also <laughs> like the Russos went, "See ya, motherfuckers. <laughs> Play with this. We'll see yeah, you like, later." Like Kevin Feige's not gonna let them just do whatever the fuck <laughs> they want. <laughs> Like, they have to run past the continuity police and the powers that be. So, I think it's well, going to be fine. I think yeah, they we'll, have... We'll find out. We'll find out in 48 hours or so. Yeah. A little yeah, less. I'm, go I'm going at 11 o'clock Thursday night. I'm going to have to figure out when I'm going. And... So, we're going to have Endgame. Uh-huh. And then Sunday, we're going to have the Battle of Winterfell. Where I promise you, like, 50% of the people we love are going to get turned into ice Everybody die! Everybody die! Yeah. Like, at least half those characters are going to be blue-eyed ice zombies by the end of that 80 minutes. So, I have filled the house with junk food. <laughs> and I'm probably just going to eat my feelings for a week or so. No, I mean, I, I was just joking, like, a few minutes ago. After last week's Game of Thrones, everybody on the internet was like, how old is Maisie Williams? This guy's just fine. She's 22. <laughs> the character's, like, in her teens. So I, and I was laughing at that because, I don't know if people have seen the episode, but she, she walks out of the thing and I'm like, oh, she's going to go red-acted. And then exactly what I said happened. And I was like, I was joking, but okay. She was putting out a vibe. You could feel it. Hell yeah. All right. Well, now that we've talked about pop culture and people, even though we have spoiled virtually nothing, people in the in the comments will... Like, no spoiler! No yeah, spoiler! Because it's, it's like knee-jerk reaction at this point. And it's time to move on to the news this week. And we've... It was just Easter. We'll talk about that in a second. Here's get the intro going. Each week... Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And and I don't have that. Why don't I switch the shot? I didn't have the shot up. Come on. Come on. There we go. There's the intro shot. That's what I needed. Um. So, uh, you ever seen Mall Rats? Yeah, a few times. Long, long ago. Bit about the Easter Bunny. You remember that? I do. You... Mall Rats takes place in New Jersey, by the way. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason I'm bringing that up. Well, 
Well, this was Florida, actually. Oh, I thought it happened in Jersey. No. Oh, my bad. Person in Easter Bunny costume. Wow. Just going at it. Put him down. An Orlando police officer had to step in and break up an Easter Sunday night, Easter Sunday fight involving a person dressed as the East. God damn. Wow. What's impressive is the head's not coming off because those heads are heavy. <laughs> the Easter buddy beat his ass. That's fucked up. Um, He's got the damn. He's got good form and everything. Orlando police officer, uh, the uh, fight happened on Orange Avenue in downtown Orlando. Videos of the incident showed a person in a bunny costume throwing several punches before an officer steps in and breaks up the fight. Antoine Edwards told uh, WESH2 that he was the man in the bunny suit. That's okay. The, the first thing to do, yeah, that was me. I was whooping his ass. Look at him doing the fucking Muhammad Ali. Damn. <laughs> Someone's oh, he's milking that shit. I swear. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Cause they're all fucked up. <laughs> um. He said he jumped in and tried to pull. He, he, yeah. He was out bar hopping with his friends. We saw a man and a woman fighting. He said he jumped in and tried to pull the man off the woman. Um. Lindsay Edwards, who uh, provided us with the cell phone video of the fight, said just before the bunny jumped in, he saw the man spit on the woman he was fighting with. Okay, so this is, did, you know, indeed, yeah, it's true. My God, though, he was just whooping on him. If I'm ever in a bar and some dude is spitting in my face, I hope the Easter Bunny comes in and houses him. Maybe, maybe pull the head off. Maybe. No, fuck no. <laughs> some of, dudes need to get their ass put in the dirt by a fucking bunny. Think of the children. Think of the children. I don't think the children are out bar hopping. You don't know. And it's Florida. It's Florida. Yeah, I don't think it's legal to have your children out bar hopping, even in Florida. That doesn't stop them. It's not the fact that it's legal there. It's the fact that they have very poor judgment. Well, it's time to have a talk with your children about how some dudes need their dick slapped in the dirt by the Easter Bunny. <laughs> and that's why the Easter Bunny is good. <laughs> You're kind, we're kind of messing up the theology here a whole bunch, you know. The Easter Bunny comes. He has fuck all to do with Christianity. Come, Easter the shit we do for Easter has fuck all to do with Christianity because the Catholics stole all the pagan holidays and we're like, that's our shit now. All your gods are fairies now. Fuck, it's a mess. Yeah, but the so all right now 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 in the in the canon, the Easter Bunny hides the eggs. And the candy for the children. And he whoops your ass. If you deserve it. Don't you think kids would be better? Like, we do that with Santa. Oh, be good or Santa won't leave you any toys. Be good or the Easter Bunny's gonna fucking snuff you. I would, you know, that was the one thing I remember when I was a kid. It was never, there was never any transactional shit with the Easter Bunny. It was just sort of like, with Christmas, there was the whole, you have to be good or you don't get presents. With yeah. the Easter Bunny, it's just like, here is your chocolate allotment. You are entitled to this, child. Yeah, Easter, growing up, people, people that aren't Catholic don't necessarily know that Christmas is not the highest of the holy days. It's Easter. Yeah. Because on Easter, Jesus he got his ass up. It's important, yeah. You go to mass like five times that week. It's a whole thing. Yep. So Easter was really more about the religious aspect. Like we did get a basket, but it wasn't about the bunny and shit. You see, like, Baptists, we just get chocolate. Is pretty much how it goes, you know. <laughs> my sister. We dye eggs and we get chocolate. My sister, the dietitian, got her kids candy-free baskets. And then she caved at the last minute and went out and bought a bunch of candy. And she had four bags of chocolate, like pepper. My nephew loves peppermint patties and stuff. And the dog ate all four bags. Because she didn't put that shit in a cabinet. <laughs> spent her night out hunting for active peroxide and peanut butter and inducing vomiting in her black lab in the driveway. 
she that's how she spent her good friday who out, who like, did this i don't know but the dog has amazing breath and she said that she's like at least it was all peppermint patty so it didn't smell that bad <laughs> so i asked, i saw my nephew <sighs> on on easter and i'm like so did your mom get your replacement candy he's like no she's not getting us candy anytime soon <laughs> oh well, speaking of kids um we're in a weird period. The dog's period. fine, by the way. She's the dog's fine. fine. We're we're in a, it all up. She's okay. We're in a weird period when it comes to how we interact with consumerism, because for like the first time ever, we have delivery everything, literally everything, every possible thing. We if you want your products delivered, if you want your food delivered, delivery everything. So kids are getting a strange perception of how this works. Yeah. They, Case We're in little Henry the Eighth. Well, case in point, five-year-old Michigan boy calls nine one one to ask for food from McDonald's. Oh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta teach your kids what nine one one is for. Five-year-old Michigan boy had a craving for McDonald's, but his grandmother was sleeping, so he called nine one one and made a request. Grand Rapids, uh, the dispatcher asked, can, he asked the dispatcher, can you bring me McDonald's? <laughs> dispatcher Sarah Kuberski said no, but reached out to police. Um, uh, Wyoming police say the uh, request made them laugh. Uh, Officer Dan Patterson stopped in at McDonald's on his way to check on Isaiah's home. He says, I'm driving That's past Missouri. so sweet, but also reinforcing the bad behavior. Yeah, it's just like it's really sweet, and I love you for doing it. But it's exactly the wrong thing to yeah, do. If the kid calls nine one one to ask for McDonald's, you shouldn't show up with McDonald's because you've shown him it works. Right. All and in a five year old's mind, that's the only part that sticks. Although the last line is amazing, um, officer said the first thing the boy said to him was, "Quote, my grandma's gonna be so mad. Can you please go away?" Oh, baby. <laughs> well, even he knows he shouldn't have called 911. Well, they probably explained it to him. Ah. Uh, but it's. It, it, officer, you're very sweet. You did completely the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's reinforcing the wrong thing. Yeah. Like, sometimes being nice is not helping. I know. Sometimes. Helping means being a dick. <laughs> I'm trying to change the cat's food right now. I'm trying to get them on a healthier diet. And they're kind of rejecting the wet food. And every day, Dan has to be like, don't give them something new. Like, make it. And they have dry food. Like, I'm not starving them. But he's like, make them eat it or not eat it. And I'm like, but they don't like it. He's like, just, they have to eat it. <laughs> like, he can't do it. Because I'm 100% that person that will give them new food. Don't do that. But that would be wrong of me. Because they have to eat the healthy food. You gotta watch your kids. Yeah. You gotta... Yeah. If you... You can't take a nap around a five-year-old. No. Because the first thing... you I'm amazed that house wasn't on fire. Yeah. Because little kids... They will get... It's like you they blink. They are devious. How many times do we have little kids steal the fucking car? If you blink, something is going to be exploded, flooded, yeah. uh, covered in some sort of feces. Like, you think they're small, so they can't do much? No, they're so fast, and they're insane. Shaved. Shaved yeah. is a... They'll either shave themselves, their siblings, the dog, or the carpet. I gave myself these bangs when I was like three, four or five. I did it with my with my little safety scissors. You can't. You can't be. You can't. We gotta watch <laughs> no. the kids. Oh, next. Pull on those little fuckers. Next up. Holy shit! You you would think people in college are smart. Yes, you would think college professor. <laughs> You would think a college professor would actually know. George W. Bush went to Yale. Yeah. Well, I'm saying not the people who went, the professors. The fu You'd think the professor. But yeah. this one. Oh my God. 
Middlebury professor placed on leave for objectionable exam question. Objectionable? Hmm, what could this possibly be? A Middlebury College chemistry professor has been placed on leave after asking students on a recent exam to calculate the lethal dose of a poisonous gas used in Nazi gas chambers during the Holocaust. Uh-uh. Yeah. That's not okay. That. Jeff Byers, who taught chemistry at Middlebury for 33 years, is being investigated by the college for faculty misconduct after the exam question was written about in a satirical student newspaper, The Local Noodle. Well, good shout out there. Um... This inexplicable failure of judgment trivializes one of the most hor horrific offense in world history, violates core institutional values, and simply has no place on our campus, Middlebury President Laurie Patton said in a statement. Translation. He done fucked up, it ain't us. No, no, it ain't us. There's more. Oh, yeah. Um, the investigator revealed a second objectionable question on exam uh, buyers admi administered last year, which referenced the Ku Klux Klan in a way that, quote, appeared to be humorous intent, but which was gratuitous and offensive. How the fuck did you work the KKK into a chemistry exam? Yeah, I mean, I can kind of see with with the, the gas. It's not sane. You could have asked that question without invoking the Nazis. Right, it right. It still be a little macabre. But you wouldn't have invoked the Nazis. But you yeah. could have said, calculate a lethal dose of sarin gas for a person of this height and weight. Kind yeah, of fucked up and goth. Yeah, but it's it's gas chemistry. Where the hell did the Ku Klux Klan... That shit, but that's because he went to chemical school in the army. Because it was literally pertinent to his job. Where did the Ku Klux Klan come into chemistry? It's like, calculate how much gas you need to burn down a crucifix. What the fuck? If Buford gets a pint of blood on his white robes, how much bleach will he need? What is wrong with you? I know. You right? just, did you just want to retire without any benefits? <sighs> like, are you just tired? Seriously, it's it just... It, it's like they got their own little fucking fiefdoms and they think they can do whatever they want and they just sort of like... I can do this. You can't stop me. Once they're tenured, they kind of can do whatever yeah. the fuck they want. You get tenure at a university, you can jerk off in lecture. There's not a lot they can do to you. Well, maybe not much the school can do to you, but, you know, police can get you involved. Probably go to jail for that, yes. Yes, you will go to jail. You won't yeah. be fired. But putting Nazi questions yeah. on the test, he's probably going to get away with it. He'll get suspended for a bit, and then he'll be back. Yeah. After 33 years, he's probably tenured. I, I'm just inclined to believe he's just not that good at chemistry. I sucked at chemistry. And I get it, like, chemistry's fucking boring. Yeah, but... I will get so many angry comments about that of all things. But, no, like, so I get you want to spice it up, because it's all fucking chemical formulas and stupid shit nobody cares about. Unless it's explosions! And it's it's weird shit you can do with, like, with, with You can do all these neat things, like fucking magic tricks in front of your fucking class. Yeah. And you have to go with the fucking Nazis? My chemistry that, teacher fried an egg using sulfur and water. That So that tells me this dude's probably not that good at chemistry because if he's going to the Nazis... Yeah, like there's other ways you could go. Get some showmanship! Because my hair almost got set on fire in chemistry class by a faulty burner whatever you call those big fucking things. Ring stand. Uh, oh, we haven't what? had... Oh, next story. We haven't had one of these in a while. Um, and there was a happy ending, even even with this. That that makes... It displeases me so much. Um, <laughs> it's astonishing that people still can't grasp the simple concept that what you put on social media other people can see. <laughs> yes. Woman 
wa woman, wanted woman's Facebook taunts help police track her down. Oh, and look at her. Waynesburg. She wants to be Lord in the Royals video. So <laughs> so you got to condition those curls, though, girl. Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, a wanted Pennsylvania woman who taunted a sheriff's department online by asking if they, quote, do pickup or delivery has gotten a response. They do both, and she's in custody. You absolute dumbass. Chloe Jones commented on a Facebook post by the Greene County Sheriff's Office featuring, office featuring her as one of the county's most wanted, writing, quote, do you guys do pickup or delivery, followed by four crying laughing emojis. Police said she had failed to appear in court on assault charges. She then got into an argument with other commenters and claimed she was at a hospital in Morgantown, West Virginia. Police tracked her down this week and she was extradited to Pennsylvania. So she's on the police's own Facebook site. Like, I know everybody loves those movies where the genius serial killer is, like, taunting the detective trying to get him. They don't do it like this. Mr. And police, I gave smart. you all the clues. And they're fiction. <laughs> oh. That's not that's not real life. And you're not that smart. Yes. Yeah, it's like now it begins our game of cat and mouse and we <laughs> open up. It's kinda like Tom and Jerry though. Yeah, it's a little bit like Tom and Jerry. I mean, come on. They can read your reply. You're telling people and that's it. she got baited by them is like to tell them where she yeah. was. She other commenters like, "Man, you're going to get caught." No, I'm not cuz I'm here. Oh yeah. Well, they found you. What did she think? They like didn't have jurisdiction? No, no. That's 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 not a, exactly a thing. We have extra every state has extradition extradition treaties with every state because we're all the same country. Yeah, so yeah, they'll just send your ass home. They will because all they have to do is make a call I and mean, say maybe not Texas because it's fucking Texas. Yeah. All I have to do is make a call and say, "Hey, we got a fugitive down there. Can you grab her for us?" Like they'll be like, "Yeah, sure, okay." Can you pick her up and deliver her? You knocked your camera, and now all I can see is, like, from here up. Not to... Yes. There you go. There we go. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, that will kind of do. Eh. Live, everybody. Okay, so, uh... You dumbass. Um... Here's another dumbass. How many times... Can you just go out drunk driving? I mean, Jesus Christ. You think after like a few it would the novelty would wear off. But this motherfucker I personally have never gone drunk driving. Menasha police arrest motorcyclist on fourth operating while intoxicated while he drove through factory. Where the fuck is Menasha? Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, I should have guessed that. It sounds Wisconsin-y. I'd been through there before. Menasha yeah, officers... The I know. The Texas thing was a joke. It was a joke, because y'all try to secede every eight years. I know. Menasha officers were called by employees of Alliance yeah. Industries to investigate a motorcyclist who drove his Harley-Davidson motorcycle up an access ramp and through the factory. Just before 10 p.m. Tuesday, a 29-year-old Nina man was uh, talking to an Alliance employee outside the building. The motorcyclist, a former employee, drove his motorcycle through the production areas of the building at speeds reaching 35 to 40 miles per hour. Now, here's the first thing. They are going to recognize you. Yeah. Because when the cops show up, you can just say, yeah, it was Dave. Yeah. We've got his employment records. Here's his address. Picture of him. This guy, he did it. It's about 14 workers were in the building uh, at the time, uh, which stretches nearly two blocks. After parking his motorcycle, the man started driving a forklift. 
So now that's two drunk vehicles. So he just parked the motorcycle in the factory and upgraded. And swapped to a forklift, yeah. Say it with me. Grand Theft Auto is not a lark. <laughs> it's never gonna be. We need to stop. We do. People are making me, he tried to drive around a forklift. Yeah, we got the MST3K. Yes, we know. It's a reference. We get he was, it. He was going for that five stars, though. <laughs> Mother, jeez. All right. Police detected the odor of intoxicants, and the man refused field sobriety test. He was arrested for felony fourth offense operating while intoxicated. Four times. They should probably take away his license. After I get, after, if I got pulled over once for drunk driving, that would be it. I mean, I'm not saying that would stop him. Once would be enough to make me go, oh shit. Yeah. Twice would be enough to, to make everyone around me go, oh shit. When you, you get to, your teens, maybe. Yeah, when you get to four. Who is giving you access to a vehicle? Right. How have they not put sugar in your fucking gas tank yet? How are you insured? You don't have a license. Does nobody love you? You can't, because you can't buy a vehicle, well, firsthand. I guess you go to somebody on, like, Craigslist and yeah. buy a fucking mo Look, they took my Honda and they took my pickup, so I need wheels, man. I sold my shitty old car to some dude for two hundred dollars for parts. Yeah. But Jesus, four times. I, doesn't it get old? Doesn't drunk Apparently, driving? Apparently not. I mean, does it, it? It drunk driving to me seems like an incredibly frustrating experience because everything is going the wrong speed. Yeah. You're going too slow and everything else is going too fast. And the worst thing for me about being drunk is that thing where you turn your head and then you feel your head turn. And like, you gotta turn your head a lot to drive a car. Yeah. There's a lot of head turning involved in that exercise. So that, that would be really fucking annoying. That seems to me like a thing you would not want to do a lot if you could help it. But people are the worst. I mean, she definitely. Uh, now, speaking of people are the worst, uh, teenagers are fucking animals. Uh, if, if, True. There, if there are teenagers watching this, don't at me. And you know why? Because we, I've got some evidence this week. Because you're young and we don't like you. <coughs> well, there's that. But there's also this. Ten high school students charged after food fight gets out of control. Stanford, Connecticut. Police say 10 students at a Connecticut high school face charges after a food fight that turned into a riot and ended with injuries to a teacher and a school resource officer. Stanford police said that the West Hill High School students ages 15 to 17 are charged with first degree rioting, breach of the peace, reckless endangerment, and assault on a police officer. School officials say Friday's food fight had been in planning for days and developed in a courtyard next to the cafeteria. So first off, this was a they were letting them. It's like, y'all want to get wild. Here you go. We're going to give you a day to have go fun. Funny. Go nuts. Here you go. Police say the resource officer was struck in the head by a full soda can. While the teacher was, quote, trampled by a mass of students. What the hell happened? Okay, in order to be a food fight, the food has to come out of the packaging. Generally, yes. Yeah. If you keep the food in the packaging, then it's a projectile fight. Yeah. That's a different thing. I mean, it's just, it's like, we, you, we, this is why we can't have nice things. Yeah. They try. They, they're like, kids, you have, we're going to do a fun thing for you. And then they right. get the fucking purge. But you little fucking assholes can handle it. Damn kids. I mean, God, yeah, it's, it, this is always one of those things where you, you fuck it up and no one else gets to do it ever again. 
ever. Full, like, do you know how bad you could hurt somebody with a full soda can to the head? That knocks somebody right the fuck out. Yeah. That could crack a skull. Depending on how hard you can throw, that's like taking a pitch to the head with a baseball. It's got the weight. What, what, how did, how, I'm just trying to understand how this degenerated into a goddamn riot. Everybody's throwing food, everybody's happy, everybody's laughing, then all of a sudden, shit gets very real, there's tear gas. Because they're all hopped up on hormones, man. <laughs> you remember, I was a fucking mess when I was a teenager. You were probably a fucking mess when you were a teenager. Oh God, yes. Everything is the end of the world. You I was shitty skin and braces. I don't think I was an aggressive mess when I was a teenager, though. No, I was a very, I was the, uh, I was a very dramatic mess, not an aggressive mess, but still. That, I think it's a great situation. I, I would have fucked somebody up if you really just let me at it. And a lot of pent up emotions, you know? And that's it. Oh, teenagers all have pent up emotions and just way too many hormones and stuff. And they're worried about getting shot now. And they just go, go, have a riot. <laughs> <sighs> Did I ever tell you about Food Fight the Clown? It's one of my old office jobs. The the cafeteria chef who for a solid year thought my name was Carol and kept asking me out so I never corrected him on my name. Wait, 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 wait. The cafeteria worker at your high school? No, at my job. At you... office job. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Office job. No I worked in that had its own cafeteria. Okay. He he let me in on the fact that the the chef thing was just like his side gig. His real thing was he was a professional clown, but he was a chef clown named Food Fight the Clown. I don't know if he's still doing it. And his dream, his life's goal was to host the Guinness World Record largest food fight. And he thought my name was Carol and I never corrected him. How do you always have a thing? Apparently I've led a very interesting life. I don't tend to think so. You always have a thing. I tend to think I've led a very boring life, but apparently I'm wrong. You you always have a thing. That's why you hired me? I guess the first thing we learned this week is teenagers are horrible. They're they're just the worst. Teenagers scare the living shit out of me. <laughs> As well they should, because food fight? No. Riot! Okay. Never, never did My Chemical Romance write a truer <laughs> song than that one. We've learned that, um, you know, if you ever get pulled over for drunk driving, once is the time to stop. That's your wake-up call. When you hit four, that's when you're, you know... At There's your... not a punch card. <laughs> that's when... <It's laughs> There's no like discount. You... It's not like at 10, you get off. Yeah, no, no. It's, it's not how it works. Um, we've learned social media is visible to everyone. Especially when you're posting on the police's own site. Yeah. They can, they can see that. Um, we've learned that just because you're a college professor doesn't mean you have any goddamn common sense. No. And apparently, chemistry involves the KKK. Somehow. If there even, even an M L F, I can't talk today. Element that has K as its symbol? Probably is, but I'm a stupid man. Yeah, so. I, I failed chemistry, so I wouldn't fucking know. Um, we've learned that you can't let your eyes off a five-year-old for, for a minute. Hell no. Because all of a sudden, you know, you take a nap, you wake up, there's a police officer at the door with McDonald's. They're little, tiny, insane people. It's not even their fault. No, they don't know the rules. No. They just got here. Their brain hasn't even grown a full size yet. They don't have a fucking clue. Everyone in the chat. 
Everyone in the channel is happily informing us that K is potassium, because that makes sense. This is why I flunked chemistry. This is why I flunked chemistry. <laughs> and finally, we've learned, you better be nice or the Easter Bunny will whoop your ass. Easter Bunny ain't nothing to fuck with. It doesn't really scan right. I tried. There might be an Easter Bunny in Wu-Tang Clan. There's like 50 dudes in there. 